Hey guys, Dave here, back in my messy shop. And uh, for this video, I'm going to show you how to make a stropping block that you can use for the final touch uh, for polishing your knives. This is one that I had made uh, a little while ago. Uh, it's come in very handy. And um, so my brother saw it and he decided he wants one. So I said, what the heck, I've got materials, I'll make one. Plus it is a good way for me to make another YouTube video. So. Uh, anyway, for those of you who have never used a stropping block, uh, here's a, basically a, a summary of it. So all, of, all this is really is a piece of wood. This started out as a scrap of 2x4, and then I have a piece of leather that is glued to it. The leather is 8 inches by 3 inches approximately. Dimensions are not critical on this. We're not talking rocket science here. Uh, and the way that I got the 8x3 dimensions were it's the same dimension as these diamond sharpening stones. I have a few of these made by uh, DMT. And uh, this particular one is the uh, fine grit. And um, it's basically just a rectangular block of steel. This is the sharpening surface that is on the sharpening surface is impregnated with uh, industrial diamond abrasive. And um, this makes a pretty good substitute for something like an Arkansas stone. Uh, I have a whole set of these things. So what I wanted to do was make a sharpening uh, or a stropping block that is the same size as my bench stones. So again, block of wood, piece of leather that's glued on, and then the leather has green polishing compound rubbed into it, and that provides the abrasive function. So this is um, th this kind of a uh, project essentially is uh, just takes a few minutes in the shop, but it allows you to put a really nice polished edge on your knife blades. And um, if you saw my previous video about the work sharp field sharpener, that has a small strop built into it. By making the strop bigger, it makes it a lot easier to uh, polish larger knife blades. So what I'll do is I'll show you um, the steps in prepping the block of wood and um, you know putting it all together. So set that other one aside, clear up some space here, and I'm going to be using that uh, DMT stone as a weight to hold the leather on. So what I've got here is I've just got a piece of scrap 2x4 uh, which uh, for most people understand that 2x4 is not actually 4 inches wide. It is, if we measure with the old machinist rule, um, it is a bit over 3 inches wide. So um, what I'm going to do in order for it to match up with the 3 inch wide piece of leather that I'm going to cut is uh, I'll remove a little bit from each edge. Now, since um, I can't saw a straight line to save my life freehand, what I've got here is a miter box that I'm going to use to cut it to length and my miter saw. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to have you guys watch the actual cut because it's going to be kind of wobbly. But, and I'll I'll bring you guys over here for a sec. See how this is done if you've never used a miter box before. And the only reason I bring that up is it seems like a lot of schools don't have shop class anymore. But I'm old enough that they do have shop. They did have shop class. So let me show you how this is set. Okay, so. Here we have the 2x4 set in the miter box, and you can see the uh, cut, where I'm going to be doing the cut. So I'm going to be doing it right here. Uh, you can see you can do it on different angles, but we just want a nice straight cut. So we don't want it right on the line, that's why it's offset a little bit to the left. And um, so essentially, what you do... So that, that shows you how the, the saw goes into the miter box and will cut a straight line. There's a, um, so let me see if I can do this one handed. See, it's starting to do the cut right there. Now, 
the miter box has a little ledge on the bottom that just hooks on to the edge of the bench and allows me to do the cut. So watching somebody saw a piece of wood is not the most interesting thing in the world. So I'll be back after I have the wood cut. Okay guys, I have the wood cut to length. Um, it's not ready yet. We're going to be checking that out in a minute. But before I uh, uh, finish up on the piece of wood, the other thing that we need is the piece of leather. So I figured uh, since I have cutting tools out right now, I'm going to just get that and then we'll come back to the piece of wood in a few minutes. So let me show you the, the leather. I need to adjust the camera here. So that's good. So the easy way of doing this essentially is just to trace out the outline. Um, and then the other thing I'm just going to do is I'm going to use this as a cutting guide. This is my DMT bench stone. And uh, what I'm going to cut it with is just plain old, um, Stanley box cutter. This is a piece of uh, cowhide that I bought, oh god, probably about, I won't be surprised it's close to 10 years ago at this point. So as you can see, it's about that thick. It's pretty heavy duty. What I'm gonna do is, um, there are different thoughts. Some people put it, uh, when they make the strop, they do it with the rough side up. Other people do it with the uh, smooth side up. On the one that I uh, made, and in this one, I'm gonna do it with the smooth side up. So there's a piece of scrap, get rid of that. As you can see, I'm left-handed. And we're almost, almost done. Obviously, if you care about your work surface, you're going to want to use something like a cutting board, but um, this is a pretty work rough workbench um, that, that I built. Maybe I'll do another video on that. So, just got one more edge here. Just about done. And so this is going to be our stropping surface, which we will glue to the block of wood. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I've got the piece of wood in the mill and um, just wanted to point out a few different things here and I'll demonstrate how I'm going to uh, just take it down to the line right here that I uh, traced out on there. So the milling machine is a Grizzly Industries G8689 tabletop mill. This is basically a Sieg that's spelled S-I-E-G X2. Uh, similar mills are sold by a variety of different companies like Harbor Freight, Little Machine Shop, Micromark, etc. This one has the tilting column, which is um, subject for another video, but I don't recommend that you get. Um, I did do a belt drive conversion on it, uh, which makes it a lot smoother and quieter. I used to have to wear hearing protection anytime I used this because the gears were so loud. But um, what I've got is it's... Um, the piece of wood is held in a vise that I got from Shars, and that is uh, it's like a four-inch uh, milling vise. It's, it's a copy of like a Kurt um, 
a lot less expensive. I've added digital readouts. I'll do another video on, on this mill. It's a, it's a pretty handy little tool to have around the house. Um, but today what I'm going to do is I'm just using a four flute end mill which can cut through uh, a pine 2x4 rather quickly and um, that'll get it down to size pretty easily. So without further ado, I'll demonstrate a bit of that and um, then what I'll do is I'll show you how I'm actually going to flatten out the, uh, the surface that the, uh, the leather strop is going to go on because if you have waves in it what's going to happen is um, you won't get full contact with the knife blade when you're doing stropping. So uh, next step here is to turn this thing on and um, uh, make a mess. So this is the safety switch and then this is the actual switch to turn it on and then this here, this control, controls how fast it's going. Now one thing that's really important is whenever you're using one of these, once you get it set to the right height, you want to lock it in place and there's a lever over here on, on this side that um, allowed me to lock it in the z-axis, the uh, up and down. So uh, because it's wood, we can set it to go very fast. And you can see we're cutting through this basically as fast as I can turn the crank. Hey guys, I'm back. We've uh, finished up doing both of the narrow sides and now what we're going to do is we're going <clears> to <throat> smooth out the uh, top and the bottom of this because uh, this particular piece of wood has a slight warp to it. I'm exaggerating but essentially like that. It's a lot less pronounced than that but um, what we want to do is we want to have the side that we're going to be attaching the, the leather too we want that to be nice and smooth but then we want the other side also to be nice and flat so that um, the thing doesn't rock on the bench if you're using it on a, on a workbench so uh, once again it's going to be basically the same thing as before so I'll, I'll spare you the, the boredom of watching me just uh, flatten this out but the the thing is is uh, since we're in a milling machine here and we have two parallel sides we're going to basically get all the sides parallel and um, so I'll be back after that's complete. Hey guys we're back we have uh, we are just about finished preparing the board uh, to um, to accept the uh, piece of leather. Um, now that all the sides are flat it normally wouldn't matter which side to put the leather on this one or this one but this piece of wood has a little bit of a crack in it and I want to fill that up with glue to prevent it from cracking anymore so we're gonna put this side up cover it with um, I'm using type on 2 wood glue I'm sure something like Elmer's Carpenter's glue would probably work fine. Uh, the last one I used uh, Type on 3 on, that worked fine. So again, it's not super critical. You just need a glue that is going to be able to bond leather and wood. And um, so just the, the last thing I do though before spreading the glue out <clears throat> is just uh, to prevent skinning any knuckles or anything like that, I just want to take the sharp edges off of the wood with some sandpaper. This happens to be started out as 150 grit. It's rather well used, so who knows what it is now. Just take the sharp edges 
And actually, I'm going to do that on all the edges. Before I uh, fired the camera up, also, I did um, sand all the surfaces just to uh, make sure they're uh, reasonably smooth. Good to go now. So, I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit here. There we go. I think that's better. Get the cord out of the way. So, again, this is just plain old um, type on to wood glue. Get your towel ready because I'm gonna be using my fingers. And again, I want to make sure that this crack gets filled. And you don't need a whole lot, <clears throat> you just want to have it spread out evenly so that you have full contact. A bit more fastidious you could use rubber gloves or you could use uh, a brush but who doesn't like getting dirty in their workshop so now as I mentioned I'm gonna put this down with the uh, smooth side up you can do either side um, Cool thing is uh, about doing this yourself is that you can experiment and um, now the thing is in order for the glue to properly bond what you're going to want to do is put some weight on it and let it set I'm going to let this set overnight um, it should be tacky in about let's see 15 now They say, they say to clamp it for a minimum of 30 uh, minutes. Do not stress joints for 24 hours. I am going to leave this here overnight. Put a little bit more weight on there. I'm going to get another one of these stones, or steel stones. And um, I'm just going to leave it like that. And then when we come back, uh, it, should, it should be tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get to it tomorrow. If not, then the day after. Uh, we'll take it off. And then what we'll do is we will apply the polishing compound. And we'll test it out. So I shall return. Hey, guys. We're back. It's been about 24 hours since we put the weights on the uh, piece of leather that was being glued to the base for the stropping block that we're making. So now we're ready to take the weights off and put some uh, polishing compound on there. So I will adjust the camera and you guys can see the stropping block. And there we have it. As you can see, I was using two of these diamond plates as the weight. And um, this is what we've got now. This is a stropping block that's ready to be prepped with the polishing compound. Um, depending upon the condition of the leather, you could put some conditioner in it, like maybe, uh, maybe Neat's Foot Oil or something like uh, Food Grade Mineral Oil. Uh, this still feels like it's uh, reasonably moist, so we're not going to put anything in there right now. That can always be applied later on uh, after a fair amount of use, and then you just you can scrape off the, the used polishing compound and, and then just apply whatever oil you want and then uh, apply a new batch of compound because you do have to apply the new compound 
every so often. So uh, once again, we're using the green compound. And it uh, came in this tube. And all we do basically is just put it on there, just rub it in. I like to give it a good coverage. This can take a few minutes. Sometimes you get these little pieces that... And uh, just in case you were wondering why we even bothered with a block of wood, it's um, it's mainly to provide clearance. If you had it on a just a thin stick of wood, or was if it was just directly on the bench, you wouldn't have any clearance for your knuckles. So putting it up on uh, a thicker piece of wood gives you a little bit of clearance. And then it's just simply a matter of, uh, at this point now, you can use it. So, just to demonstrate, I've got a Ganzo Firebird. This knife is actually pretty sharp now. I resharpened it yesterday in my previous video. But we can always touch it up a little bit. So... Just like that. And what's happening is as I draw this backwards across the strop, it's polishing up the, the bevel and the edge. Uh, if, if there was a wire edge on here, it would get rid of that as well. This is getting to the point where it's very sharp. That just gave me a nice bald spot and there's a good bit of hair. It's noticeably sharper than when, when I started. So that's really about it. So this one is going to my brother. Um, he's looking forward to getting this. One of the things he's going to be doing with this is using it to touch up the blades on his broadheads. All right, so we're finished with our stropping block. Again, we've got just, really it's just a simple block of wood with a piece of leather that's about eh, one eighth to three thirty seconds thick, something like that. And just cover it with some stropping compound. The leather is, is held on with some type bond uh, too, wood glue. Um, and uh, again, there's multiple ways of making one of these. You, you don't have to use a thick piece of wood like this, but I like it because it gives you clearance when you're working on the bench, you know, so you're not smacking your knuckles. Um, it could be longer, it could be wider, it could be narrower, it doesn't really matter. Um, it all depends on what you're planning to use it for, the, the size of the, the, the sh tools that you're stropping with it. Uh, if you're doing something like a machete or big bowie knives, something like that, you're probably going to want something a bit longer. But for pocket knives, something like this is great. Uh, it's a nice addition to your toolkit. And, um, you know, the, the cost on this was really minimal. Um, There's a piece of scrap, 2x4 piece of scrap leather that I had from a from a big hunk that I had bought years ago and um, I scrounged up the green stropping compound but you can get that for not a whole lot of money various places uh, that, that sell things like um, uh, car finishing supplies or you can get them on Amazon that sort of thing so anyway I hope you enjoyed this I hope you found it useful if you did please hit like please hit subscribe and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Thanks for watching.